Saturday, everyone. Welcome to a live and streaming. I'm Ted. It's really, really killer weather here in the Bay Area. I hope it's killer wherever you're at. Now, my guest here, my guest, the one and only Jared from Machine Head and X Sanctity. Let's bring him in. There he is, dude. Hi, Jared. Hello, Ted. How are you? Good. How are you? First and foremost, thank you for joining the stream, man. I really appreciate it. Of course, no problem. Yeah. Where are you at, man? How's the weather out there? Uh, well, you know, it's sunny and it's warm, but the air quality is not very great currently right now. So are you up in Northern Cal? Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm in the Santa Cruz mountains. What? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know you lived down there. Yeah. Yeah. We moved out here. Actually, it's funny. We moved out here, uh, at the very beginning of March last year, two weeks before lockdown hit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, How do you like it out there? I love it. It's beautiful. It's quiet. Uh, we've got great neighbors. We got horses down the road. We're like 20 minutes from the beach and all the hiking and mountain biking I could ever want to do. So it's it's pretty great. Dude, dude, that's a trek up to a uh, rehearsal in Oakland, huh? Yeah, it's a bit, you know, a little over an hour. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, that drive isn't bad. And, uh, you know, i I I got the Prius, so I get good gas mileage. <laughs> there you go, dude. And you, yeah. you get your you get your alone time, you get your me time, listen to some music and just yeah, drive. Sure. Music, podcasts, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. Dude, I know it, a lot of people know you're in Machine Head, but and I want to get to that later, but I want to talk about your other band, Sanctity. My old band, yeah. Dude, I'm going to tell you a story, dude. I'm going to okay. tell you a story. You know, I knew you were in Sanctity, I didn't know what you did in Sanctity. I've heard the name so many times, you know, from back then. You guys did a lot of touring. You guys, mm-hmm. one album, you guys were just touring like a motherfucker. But I didn't hear any music until last week when I texted you. I was doing yard work. I had my weed whacker on. I go, oh, shit. I got Jared on next week. I do want to talk about Machine Head. Let me put on the Sanctity album. And, bro, I text you, dude. That's a fucking bad as fuck record, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were really proud of it. We were really proud dude, of it. Dude, I mean, the first song on that record, it's like, what the fuck, dude? It's mm-hmm. like, what was it? Uh, Beneath the Machine. Mm-hmm. Dude, I mean, the riffs, the, the production, the guitar tone is amazing, dude. It's amazing, dude. I was like, whoa. And I didn't know you played guitar and sang. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, so uh, we, it's funny. So the, the, there's a couple things as far as, the yeah. tones, as far as the tones, uh, we did that record with Jason Sukoff. No way. Yeah. Yes. At Audio did. Hammer. Yes. And you obviously know Jason Sukoff. You guys yes, I do. Well, <laughs> um, so yeah, we did that record with Jason and uh, and he's still to this day. Uh, we it was him and uh, Mark Lewis. Yes. And still to this day, they're like, dude, like that's probably you know we all are kind of in agreement. That's one of the best tones. You know, they, they still will go back and a b that tone to some things that they work on. Um, and it was actually mixed by uh, Colin Richardson. What a team! Yes, what exactly. Team. So we yeah we were really fortunate that day. And as far as you know, it's beneath the machine. You know, that's that old, you know, Monty Connor Roadrunner Records, you know, favorite, especially Monty Connor. You start with the banger, like yeah. just put they like front, put them right at the front and just start off strong. Dude, I love that song. I mean, it's I saw the video. Mm-hmm. Then I saw a live performance. I was like, dude, it freaked me out that you were playing rhythm guitar yeah. and singing because I only seen you with Machine Head playing. Yeah. Bass and back. Well, and here's the other interesting thing. Sanctity was the only band I've ever played guitar in. I've, really? I've always been a bass player. Wow. So, you know, and, and a lot of people, you know, but I guess because of, you know, how it came about 
And when we were on tour and stuff, it was just, you know, a lot of people still see me as a guitar player, but I, like I said, I've, I was always a bass player. It was just kind of by default, we needed a, a rhythm player. And I was like, well, you know, I mean, I could, I can play guitar. So, and, and as far as playing and singing, I've been doing that since my very first bands I ever had back in high school. I mean, it was just, I was the guy who could sing and was able to figure out how to make that separation between the hands and the head and, and, and do all that. So, dude, you know what I'm going to do, bro? Cause I dig it so much. I'm going to, I'm going to play the video for beneath the machine. Okay. I'm going to play you some facts. What? We, we shot that video in Asheville. There was a tattoo shop um, whose name I now can't remember. And I don't believe is there anymore. Um, but yeah, we had a friend that worked there and it was, it was a pretty literal interpretation. It was a very literal interpretation of, of, of the lyrics. But, uh, but it was a fun shoot. It was like snowing outside one of the nights that we shot and stuff. And, but, uh, but it was a good time. See, I, like, see, I, you learn something every day. I didn't know Jason and Mark Lewis worked on it and Colin Richardson mixed it. No wonder it sounded the way it sounded. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I like, it, dude, like I said, first time I heard it, weed wagon. I was like, what? What? This? And I text you, dude. Dude. <laughs> You're <laughs> like, oh, oh this I, record. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I knew you were in the band. I didn't know what you did. You know what I mean? I just knew, boom. But let's play the video for Beneath right. the Machine. And I want to get to talking more about Sanctity because I dig it. So everyone who's watching, this is uh, yeah. Beneath. Yeah. Let me see if I been having problems with this come on man okay here it is beneath the machine if it's hold on man you yeah know what? sometimes I... there's a couple weird versions i think one of the versions oddly yeah. enough like is missing like 90 percent of like the right side guitar or something okay. one of the it's weird i don't know i don't know exactly what the For some reason this mute this doesn't work let's see if it works right now come on yeah. hold it. Hold it.
dude, so sick. So sick, dude. Dude. Hey. What happened? What, what happened? happened? Well, uh, I think that there was a lot of things. Uh, first of all, I think, you know, one of the things that made it tricky for us was that that record was finished, done, ready to go for about nine months before Roadrunner released it. Really? At the time, I think they were focusing on, they had Megadeth uh, with their new album on Roadrunner. They had Dream Theater was doing a new album and like a couple other bigger tier bands. Um, and I think that they were just, you know, putting their focus on those, you know, th those larger bands. So we toured, we toured for quite a bit with essentially no record. We did Gigantor 2006 with no record. Wow. It was interesting. Um, you know, and I told Dave Mustaine that when he came personally to our show and asked us to go on tour with him, I was like, well, we don't have a record yet. And he's just kind of like, you know, he's like, he's like, I want you guys to go on tour with me which was great. Um, you know, and so we, we got to tour with, you know, with quite a few bands um, who we're still good friends with. And then uh, there was a few things that happened all at once. Uh, when the record was finally released, we had the opportunity to do a tour with Trivium in Europe and the UK. And it was uh, Trivium, I think it was Trivium, Gojira, Annihilator, and Sanctity. And, you know, and, and at the time it was, you know, it was a fantastic opportunity for us. It was the only European tour we ever did. Um, so, I mean, we, we kind of had to say yes. Yeah. Uh, it was just too good an opportunity to pass up. However, that meant that we were not touring the States when the record was released. And it just, I mean, to be honest, the record never really caught traction in the U.S. at all, really. Um, it did okay in the U.K. and it did, I think, really well in Japan, I'd heard. Because, um, you know, I, I get most of the comments that I hear from people, they're like, oh, my God, this record was so amazing. I love this record. Like, those were, those are typically people in the U.K., including Matt Alston, our current drummer. Um, who, you know, is, is still super stoked on the record, which is really neat. Um, so, so there was that, it was just an interesting timing. I also think that looking back, that was kind of the start of that whole thing with Roadrunner where they were starting to like call their bands and like kind of like that little downhill slide that, that they had to deal with when they kind of fell apart. And I think we were just right in that perfect pocket. We were just, you know, we were just in that you know, at the beginning of that whole thing. Um, and so we were touring that whole time. Weren't making any money. I mean, you know, we would come home and, you know, after five weeks of tour and eat, everybody's like, all right, here's your hundred bucks. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, it was rough, you know, yeah. luckily at the other, you know, at the time, like, you know, I had another job and it was, I was okay. Um, I was also married at the time. And in December of 2007, my daughter was born. And um, oddly enough, one of the last tours that we did, actually the last tour that I did with the band was actually with Machine Head. That's right. I remember that tour. Didn't you fill in during that tour too? Yes, I did. Uh, Adam had broken his foot. And I, I filled in on, but I filled in on vocals only. Okay. You know, they had uh, Brandon Sigmund from Hostility uh, filling in on bass. That's right. Uh, but they needed someone to do the vocals. And Monty said to Rob, was like, oh, well, you know, you've got Jared on the tour. He's like, Jared could definitely do those vocals. So I would basically, you know, I'd be off on the side stage. Yeah. And during the clean vocal parts or the backup vocal parts, I would walk out on stage to the microphone and do the part and then back off on the side stage. So it was, it was interesting. I mean, it was, it was fun for me. Um, so uh, you so, walked out there like the temptations, huh? like one of yeah. the temptations, huh? <laughs> like David Ruffin would be singing and dude would come in and <laughs> like the there you go, dude. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> 
Um, so we did that tour. Um, and then, you know, I, I was honestly, it was, uh, I was having a hard time, you know, cause I was, you know, trying to tour as much as I could. And I had this new baby and, you know, I, I, I wanted to talk to the guys about what we could do. You know, I was like, I'm having a hard time. You know, it's, it's getting rough. You know, we're not making any money and I've got this new baby. And I was just like, you know, trying to figure out what we can do. Yeah. And basically, um, I mean, I guess everybody got real scared and we just kind of split up. Like they just asked me not to, you know, they, they essentially kicked me out. Um, cause they were like, well, you know, if you're not going to be committed to this, then we should just find somebody else. So, um, so that ended my time in sanctity and they tried to, they, they did another tour with a couple of other guys that we know, and, you know, wasn't great. And I guess after that, they just kind of fizzled out. Um, but the, but, you know, and also, also right around that time, we had done some new demos which looking back now, I kind of admit probably weren't that great. And this is something that, uh, something that I learned afterwards. So basically Roadrunner dropped us after that. After that one album. Yeah. And like uh, they, while we were doing those demos, you know, and I'd heard that and they're like, well, they're, we know we're not going to continue. Um, but I learned later uh, that I guess, the head of Roadrunner Records had come out to see us at a show, I guess in New York, and didn't tell anybody. And saw us at the show and basically just made a call and was like, they're not ready. He's like, they're not ready to continue to step it up and to, you know, to, 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 to move up. And that was part of the decision to drop us, which I never knew until just I mean, honestly, just a couple of months ago. <laughs> wow. Um, he just straight up went incognito to your show. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Wow. He went to the show, didn't tell anybody, you know, and was just like, was just like, nah, they, they're not ready. They don't got it. And then they decided to drop us. Man, dude, that, that, that that's bummer because that record is great, dude. It's yeah, a great record. It, yeah. I, I'm pretty it's sure awesome. if situations were different and things were you know, the momentum was going and you were able to do it more. I, I don't yeah. think I'd be here talking to you right now. Type deal, yeah. possibly. Yeah. yeah. I, mean? I mean, it's one of those things like, I, like you never know. I mean, it was, it was, I had a great time doing it and I'm still really proud of that record. And I still talk to those guys and we're all still friends. And, uh, but you know, I mean, it's like, it's one of those things that I look back and say, you know, if that had continued, I might not be where I am now. True. Um, and it's interesting to think about at times, but then again, I'm also, you know, I'm also the kind of person who says, well, it happened the way it did and you can't change it. And, you know, this is what is. And, you know, but, uh, but, you but know, you can't help but think about it. It, it. It's in the back of your head every now and then, you know, what I mean? every now and then. Yeah. Every now and then. I mean, like I said, I'm proud of the record and I'm proud of what we did. Um, but, you know, it's not like, there's not like this giant gaping hole of regret in my life about it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm glad that we did what we did and, and that was, that was then. And then this is now. So. Yeah. Is, is it true that it was Matt Heafy that discovered you guys? Um, yes, yes. We, um, we had gotten into trivium. Excuse me, Matt Heafy. I didn't say that wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah I gotta, I, I gotta correct it. I gotta I correct it. <laughs> I try. Yeah. You know, I'm like, uh, it's Heafy. Yeah. It's Heafy. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we had gotten into Trivium around Ember Two Inferno. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, they were playing a Road Rage, a Roadrunner Road Rage tour. Um, I believe with Fear Factory. Fear Factory is the only other band that I remember on the bill. Um, and we used to play at a venue in Spartanburg, South Carolina, called Ground Zero. Uh, you may have been there. Um, the old venue had kind of like an upstairs, bigger stage, big room. And then there was like a short little bar and you would go down the short set of stairs. And there was like a smaller room with a smaller stage, like right off, like not super divided. There was no doors or anything. So, um, but the way that, but, and we had played there quite often, we were in very well. That was kind of where we like cut our teeth really, you know, for playing live shows. 
And so we were in good with the promoter and we heard Trivium was playing and we really wanted to get on the show. So he put us on the show, but the way that the show was arranged was like, it was one of the, one of the, the national touring bands upstairs. And then one of the smaller local bands downstairs and it would flip flop instead of, you know, all the local bands at first and then all the larger bands, it was flip flopping. So technically Trivium played before us, they played upstairs before we had our, our slot downstairs. So we watched the show. And then after the show, after we watched their show, and then after their show, we, we approached them and we're like, Hey man, like we love you guys. We think you guys are super sick. Like, you know, will you come down and watch our show and give us some pointers and, and tell us what you think and just, you know, check out our show. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah OK, OK, OK. And uh, they came down and watched our show. And then Matt came up to us and said, basically was like, give me every piece of recorded material that you have. He's like, give me like demos, everything. He's like, give me all of it. He's like. I'm going to pass this on to Roadrunner. Um, and he did. And so then we got in touch with, you know, Roadrunner and Monty Connor uh, around 2005. And, uh, you know, just kind of just went from there. Wow, man. I mean, that's cool that, you know, Matt was able, you know, he checked out your show and just gave you that helping hand. Yeah, you know I mean? it was very cool. Those guys are really great about, you know, spotlighting, you know, lesser known bands. And, and they still are to this day, like, yeah. you know, all the time. They really are. They're like, oh, check out this new band that you might not have heard of. Like, it's super sick. So, That's yeah. why it, I wanted you on my stream, dude, because of Sanctity, bro. I mean, like yeah. I said, I was blown away when I heard that record. Man. Right on. Thanks. Yeah, it's a, like I said, it's a great sounding record. Oh, it's, great sounding record. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, um, things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you guys did a lot of touring. It, Oh man, I, I wish I would have heard you guys back then. Like, take the time to go. Let me check them out because I just saw yeah. the name. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. But it's never too late. I mean, the album is there. It's in the history books. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Yeah, it's it's oh. a great it's a great first and only record. You know, and yeah. like I said, I'm still really proud of it, and I still get you know compliments on it all the time. And it's it's. I'm it's, a fan, bro. Right on. Late to the late to the gig, but I'm all right. Better late than never. That's right. Now, what when you left Sanctity, what were you doing before you auditioned for Machine Head? So I left Sanctity at the end of 2007 or the beginning of 2008. Um, I, I was uh, my, my, my other job, my at home real world job was uh, as a glazer. I was doing glass, like mirrors, windows, showers. Wow like that um you know and I, I enjoyed the work i thought it was you know i think glasses it's a very cool material to work with uh and i was doing that um but then around you know like 2008 happened and i lost my job so it was, i was out of work for a little while and you know was trying to find work i got divorced at the time um somewhere around 2009 or 10 I believe, I think 2010, um, you know, it was going through a bunch of shit, fucking slummed around for a little while. Um, but I, I, I didn't play music for like five years. I didn't touch wow, it hard and sane, didn't do nothing. It was just not, I was like, okay, well, if, you know, if I need to be home to focus on, you know, my child, then I'm going to do that. And I'm just, you know, and I, I gave it up. Um, and then around 2011, I guess, um, my old guitar player, Zeph from Sanctity, the Lefty Shredder, um, he was playing in a, in a local death metal band called From A Dig. And, uh, and they, they needed a bass player. Um, their bass player, they had a, had a bass player uh, who had moved away. And, uh, and he just asked me if I wanted to play. And I said yes before he even finished the question. Wow. Like, he was like, hey, you know, we need a bass player. And do you want? Yes. 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 Yes, I do. Yes, please. And so, you know, I started playing music again and like really got back into bass. Um, 
and, you know, reconnecting with the instrument. And, you know, and we did well locally. Um, there's a, there's a venue in Asheville called Orange Peel. Oh yeah. I know the Orange Peel. And, uh, you know, and we, we headlined, they they had like a local showcase show and we headlined a couple shows there and it was really great. And we, we did, you know, it was fun. I mean, we weren't making money, but like crowd response wise, we were doing pretty well. Um, but, uh, that band kind of fell apart. Um, I was in another band, uh, shortly after that, a more like progressive metal kind of band unfortunately the name of the band which i can't remember which i feel terrible about but while i was in that band my old drummer jeremy london uh called me and was like hey man uh machine heads holding auditions for bass players and i was like huh all right fuck it i'll give it a shot I was like, let's see what happens. And then, you know, so I immediately called our old manager, Justin Archangel, and basically just asked him, I was like, hey, you know, I'm interested in this, you know, like, what, what do I got to do? You know, like, like, how do I, how do I do this? He goes, uh, all right. He's like, let me, let me check. He's like, I'll look into it and I'll get back to you. And then about a week later, Dave McLean called me and was like, hey, bro, I heard you were going to audition. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. And he's like, fucking sweet. And like got my foot in the door for that. Um, and, you know, I fucking practiced my ass off. And, uh, you know, at, at home and just I watched all the live videos. You know, I had, you know, a list of songs that I was going to do. And I watched live videos and was really practicing and, uh, and then I flew out of Atlanta to come to California uh, I, or I sent in my audition video. I saw those. Yeah. You, you had short hair at the time. Yeah, Short hair at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I sent that in and uh, I, I made it through the next round of about like eight people, maybe. And uh, and before I flew to California, I, I, I was flying out of Atlanta and uh, I had some friends that lived down in Atlanta. And I was I basically went down to their house and practiced in their basement for like three days, just wow. all day, just like fucking nailing it, you know, nailing the parts, uh, the vocals, but also like getting used to moving with it, you know, and like learning how the parts made me feel and like that, that performance kind of part of it. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was working on that too. And then, yeah, flew out to California and did my audition. And, uh, were you nervous? Um, no. No, I wasn't nervous. Um, I mean, I was excited, um, but it wasn't like, you know, I mean, part of my mind was like, all right, well, if I don't get it, I don't get it. But at least yeah. I tried. And like, I was able to say that, you know, I, I gave it a shot, but like, I wasn't like, oh, I've never been nervous to perform or to play or to make music. Like I've never, it's never been a thing for me. I've never had stage fright once in my life. Like it's just always been something that's been very natural for me. I need some of what you have, bro. <laughs> you know it's just i don't know like i've 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 been performing from a young a very young age so it's never been it's never been an issue for me um but uh you know but i went out and did my audition and uh as soon as you know here's a funny story about the audition um so they were using pro tools to record all the auditions and during my audition every time i would start to sing Pro Tools would shut off and we <laughs> stop and restart again. So it was like this big, it was, it was a bit of a clusterfuck. And I was like, Oh my God, I was like, these guys are going to fucking hate me. But then also in the back of my head, I'm like, well, you know, it's like, it's not my fault. It's Pro Tools. Like, what are you going to do? Pro Tools is, is, is tricky. No, no. You were like, man, I'm bad as fuck. That's why <laughs> it's going down, dude. <laughs> it shuts up. Yeah. It goes, they can't Pro handle like, my range. I'll take it. I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that, that, that was interesting. That was interesting. But, uh, you know, but I also, I learned a couple of extra songs that they didn't ask that we played through. Nice. Um, you know, I was like, well, let me pick a couple other songs that I'd like. And so did that and, you know, had dinner with the guys. And then, you know, a few weeks later, they called me and told me I had the gig. Right on, dude. So, so you had to relocate to California, huh? Yes. Yep. I, I packed up everything. I had one large bag and one large box. 
That's it. Flew out here and yep. you've been here since. Yep, been here ever since. Dude, that, that's 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 really cool. I mean, the first time I saw you with Machine Head, I believe it was um at the shoreline. It was oh, uh, was it Mayhem, I believe. Yeah. You, you played the parking lot. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thought it was great, dude. I was like, killed it, bro. You killed it. You know, I was like, they picked the right dude. Yeah. You know, I'm you, sure people were like, who's this? Here's this weird dude with the short hair. Who the fuck is that? I'm pretty sure it must have been like, uh, uh, how would you, what's the word? Tough or kind of nervous. I mean, coming in since Adam's been with the band for that long, you know, of course, for a new, uh, yeah. for someone coming in, you probably had those jitters, but you also had that, probably had that Jason, you said attitude like, I'm going to go kill it. Yeah, I mean, I, it was like, I, I, I thought of it like this. I mean, I guess in some ways there was shoes to fill, but I brought my own shoes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. I, I was there. I wasn't there to try to compete, and I wasn't there to try to, you know, like disregard what had come before. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't like I wasn't trying to, you know, and I wasn't trying to do the exact same thing. I was there. I was there to put myself in machine head. Yeah. Um, to, to the best of my ability. So and that, that, you, that's what I focus on. You did it well, dude. You well, did you. it well, man. And how are you enjoying it so far? I love it, man. You know, honestly, like I love playing these songs and I love seeing the the lengths and breadths of the passion of this dedicated fan base that is just, it's still like at times just mind blowing, you know, head cases. Yes. The head cases, these people that travel all over the world, um, you know, these people that, you know, these bonds that are formed between these people from across the globe, you know, from Japan to Europe, to South America, to Canada, you know, like it's everywhere. And, you know, I will see these, you know, disparate groups of people and they just all come together, you know, and then even outside of shows, I see them, you know, they'll take vacations to go visit each other and stuff like that. So it's like, it, it takes on this family aspect, which is really cool. I think that's cool. Don't mind my dog. He's barking. My, the FedEx guy is here. He always barks. Oh, yeah. the, you know how that is, dude. Yeah, I know how it is. I got, I got two little ones there. I got one over here in the bed and the other one's downstairs. But yeah, that's my dog. Espen. But anyways, dude, to ch I want to get into Machine Head, but I want to throw something at you. This is off topic. Okay. I want to know if you recognize this photo. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Could you tell tell us about that, dude? I'm gonna before we go. I want to give a shout out to my friend Mike Percali, who took this photo. <laughs> now you could tell me about this photo. Okay, so I'll tell, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what it is, and I'll tell you the story behind it. Okay. This is me on stage with Jared Leto from 30 Seconds to Mars. Okay. At, uh, at Shoreline. And uh, I'm, I'm a 30 Seconds to Mars fan. Uh, me and Rob, actually, which is, you know, one of the things that we bonded over over the years. Uh, and um, I was I was at the show. It was uh, they were opening for Muse, and I'm a fan of Muse as well. Oh, and me too. I never seen them live. I I, I want. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. That's where I had to go. I was like, dude. I was like, I gotta see Muse live. I was like, and Thirty Seconds to Mars. I was like, I was like, I gotta go. And you know, we 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 had good seats, and you know, so basically, you know, Jared Leto's like, he's like, all right, who wants to come up on stage with me? And I stood on my seat, and I was like, me me i do and i'm like windmilling and i'm like oh my god and he's like looking he's like all right cool you know and then he goes hey where's that guy with the long hair and i was like me so he brought me up on stage and um you know he's like what's your name i was like my name's jared bro and he was like i was like yeah yeah <laughs> Spelled the same and everything and uh, yeah, but it was just like, you know, he's like, all right, you know, we're going to see which side is loud, or this side or that side or this side or that side and the whole thing. And I was just silly, a little thing. Uh, but yeah, that was that was that was that was kind of cool. <laughs> because it, it, it's funny, man, because uh, my friend Mike, who sent me that photo, goes, could you talk to Jerry about this? Because he was at that show. Yeah. And he saw you on the, the screen and he goes, that's the dude from Machine Head. <laughs> but he wasn't sure until you said, my name is Jared. He goes, that's it. 
<laughs> told you so. And he just sent me this photo. I go, all right, I'm going to bring it up to Jared. See if what he is. has good memory. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Although That's I would, awesome, dude. I will say, I actually, I remember that night for some other, maybe not so good reasons. That was a, that was a not so good night with my ex-girlfriend. That okay. night. But was, Muse, but Muse but, was badass in 30 seconds. Yeah, it was great. Okay. It was a great show. Like I loved it. Like it was, yeah, it was fantastic. Dude, I want to, we, before I showed you that photo, we mentioned your diehard fans, head cases. I want to talk about something that I find very inspiring. What you guys do. I mean, past members, current members, everything this evening with machine head. Mm -hmm. It's um, and the fact that you do it for these diehards, I could see why you guys do it. Cause your fan base is so huge. And I mean, I'm a fan of machine head, but I'm not a head case. There's two different things, dude. You know what I mean, <laughs> two different things. I've been, you know, I've been a fan since pre burned my eyes, you know, I've seen them before, you know, during the local circuit and stuff, but at evening with man, uh, you guys, play this long set you change up the set list nightly mm -hmm. covers other songs i mean i want to know like the preparation that goes into doing this show i mean is can you talk about like how do you prepare outside the band how does the band prepare i mean rehearsals must be intense you know like and lead you know the logistics and oh because I know the last one in Europe, the burn my eyes. You, you and Rob did like almost three hours where Chris and Logan had a break. Mm -hmm. Matt and what's your guitar's name? Vlog. Vlog. Yeah, he, yeah, they had breaks, but you guys, you and Rob kept going. So there must, I like to know what goes into it, dude. That's, it's pretty fascinating to me. Um, what goes into it? Well, uh, obviously, uh, familiarity with the catalog is obviously a big part of it. And, uh, you know, and I've just learned, you know, one of my favorite practice techniques is to basically pick an album and I just put it on, I press play and I play through the whole album. I've done wow. that since high school. Like, that's just something fun to me, like to get that flow of an album and to just learn songs. And, and it feels, you know, even as I'm practicing, it feels a bit like a show, which is like a set list, you know? Um, and, you know, and it, it, it started off, I mean, I don't think the idea was to play like super long shows. I think the idea was just that we just wanted to, you know, like we would headline, but it would be just us. You know, that was the idea that it would be, you know, only us and we have enough material. And it started off and it started off slowly. We did it. We did um, a couple of small club runs first to kind of break it in and like see how it was going to go and see how it felt. And basically the shows just started getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. And when you're on tour like that, you know, when you, once you get into tour shape, you know, you're just, you know, you're pushing it by three or five minutes almost every time, you know, and some shows, you know, you'd have some shows, some places where you're like, okay, you know, this crowd's really good. And then, you know, other places where it's just like, you know, we, we would prepare the set list. Um, there are certain blocks of songs that were that remain the same. Staples. Yeah, staples. Mm -hmm. And there's a cup, there's some other slots in there where you know we can mix and match or call audibles. Oh yeah. You know, um, sometimes we would have songs in a set, and sometimes we're like, ah oh, no, like uh, we're, we're just gonna skip it. You know, let's let's pull the song, we're gonna move on and just, you know. Uh, and then other times we could, you know, add songs in on the fly. Uh and it's just, you know, constantly playing shows like that, like it just becomes the normal, you know, playing anything less than two hours. I'm like, are, are we done already? Like it just it just goes by like it just it flies by. It really it really doesn't. I mean, just, you know, I guess, you know, our energy was really synced and, and you know, the energy of the crowd, it, it just carries you. And it's like, like I said, it doesn't feel like a long show to me. You know, and, and luckily I've heard, you know, a, a, quite a few of our fans and people that watch the show, you know, have said, you know, they're like, wow, like it doesn't, it doesn't feel like two hours or two and a half hours or three hours. Like the set list, like it comes in waves, like it, it's dynamic, you know, we hit it and then we bring it down and then we bring it up and then we bring it down and it just, it just got this super great flow. And like I said, it just became normal. I mean, that that's our normal now. 
Yeah, I mean, you guys, I mean, that's a, that's a long time. And to a diehard, it's probably not a long time. I mean, you give them yeah. their money's worth yeah. and, and they love it. But, you know, I mean, rehearsals must be intense. You know, I mean, it's I mean, no more. And I mean, I wouldn't say it seems any more intense than a normal show or, or than a normal rehearsal. Excuse me. I mean, it's just I, 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 I don't know. I mean, we work on lots of different songs. Um, and, you know, I, I, but I will say in rehearsal, it's a bit like the show. Like we try to mix it up. You know, we try to every now and then we'll pull out, you know, some deep cut B side thing and just go over that. And we're like, wow, you know, like, I just think that the catalog lends itself so well. Cause there's, you know, even, even beyond like just the hits, you know, there's this whole other group of songs that would be considered deep cuts that are still just fucking bangers. Like Dude, aren't a lot of deep cuts like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. of, of course you guys, you know, Imperium, Davidian, um, mm-hmm. the blood, sweat, and tears. Those are like staples of the set. Like they have to be played. Yeah. But every now and then, I'm pretty sure, like, hey, let's bust out "Devil with the King's Card" or yeah. you know, deep cuts like that. And you're like, yeah. oh man, you know, like "Struck a Nerve." Yeah. Or, uh, or from this day, you know, like stuff like that, or like "Desire to Fire." Like, dude, like you know, it's it's crazy, and it's funny because they're actually, if you look on. I believe it's Apple Music. There is there's two Machine Head playlists. You know, there's like a they have like the Machine Head Essentials or whatever, and that's like you know all the main hits. But there's actually a whole other little literal playlist of songs that is like, you know, it's like deeper Machine Head, and even that playlist, like I said, it's just bangers, man, fucking bangers. They are, dude. I mean, there's some songs I'm like, oh man, that's how come you don't play it live? But I, then again you guys are touring so much that when you're in the Bay area or something like we're out. So I barely get to see you guys. Well, yeah. same thing with you and all that. Dude, yeah. is it safe to say that you could, that you guys machine head could play every single song in your catalog? I'd say about 95%. I, me personally, I could do about 95%. Uh, I mean, I've got, obviously, you know, we played through the entire, you know, if I go by albums, we played through all of burn my eyes. Uh, more things change. I know that entire album. Oddly enough, that that I'd say more things change is probably my favorite Machine Head album because just the timing of that album, um, just you know, it, it it when I listen to it, it takes me back to a place. You know, I totally get it. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, what was after that? Burning Red. Uh, we've played. I mean, I know. I mean, we've. I will say recently, since we've been doing like the playthroughs for the anniversaries on our live streams, like I've really, you know, really solidified those songs. Um, but yeah, like I can play, you know, there's, there's some songs on Supercharger that I don't know yet. But other than that, I know, I know everything. I mean, I might have to rehearse it. I might not be able yeah. to just whip it out at any given time. But a lot of the times, sometimes even I'm surprised, like I'll just pull them out of my head, you know, like, we'll be like, okay, we're going to play this. I'm like, uh i'm like okay and like i'm like uh, i think i remember that and then it's it just it's there like just my hands just automatically know it and it just happens muscle memory yeah muscle memory for sure exactly so you know uh yeah i could say you know if we had time we could probably play you know like 95 percent of those songs at least me and rob could play 95 percent of those songs you know pretty much to a t it is really inspiring how you guys do that and you do it for your fans. I mean, because you said people travel and if if fans are traveling, they're going to experience a different Machine Head show every night. Yeah. And that was the other thing is that, you know, we, you know, we want to, you know, mixing it up keeps it fun for us and keeps exactly. us on our toes. But then it is cool to, you know, bust out songs that people have not heard in a while. And it makes it more desirable, you know, if somebody's like, oh, well, when they were in Paris, they played this song. And so some, somebody in London is like, okay, you know, are they going to play that song? And then people in London are like, oh, wait, well, they didn't play that, but they played this other song that you didn't get. And like, you know, it gets people like, oh my God, what, you know, it, it, it gets people excited. Yeah, that's true. And like you said, it's good for you guys, keeps you on your toes and you're not on autopilot. Exactly. Basically, you know, exactly. I mean, like I said, first sections of the show, you know, that are, they pretty much stay the same, but yeah, I don't think autopilot is ever the word. Like I'm, I'm super like tuned in and like it becomes, 
even the set list becomes a muscle memory. Like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes in rehearsal, uh, when we play certain songs, I'm so used to ending one song and going into a certain other song because of the set list that yeah. sometimes I'm like, oh, wait a minute. How does that song start? Because I'm used to it coming out of the other song, but we're not doing that. I'm like, okay. Uh, and it takes me half a second. But, uh, but that's, that's good. It's good for you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Dude, what's it like playing with pyro? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's really hot. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it just, it's like getting a blast in the face, but you know, it, uh, I will say, you know, at least to me, it feels safe. We know exactly where they are. It's nothing crazy. It's not like Metallica pyro where you're going to accidentally step over the pot and get blasted. Uh, but, uh, it's pretty cool to see, like, especially with like the, uh, the, the, the burn my eye stuff, you know, there's just so many themes of fire through the album. Oh yeah. You know, you know, burn you know it's just like oh, blast and just like oh my god dude it's like ugh. it's it's i don't know man it it definitely takes it to another level for us and uh you know and it's funny because we have to have talks you know when we did it you know about like okay you know so like when this pyro goes off try not to be like like, oh my gosh, like you just, you gotta, you gotta know that it's coming. We know where it's at, like on the set list, it's marked, like the song has pyro. So, you know, but we can't, you know, just like, like take it in stride and just focus on the song, you know, try not to be like, oh my gosh, wow, look at that fire. <laughs> you gotta be in the moment. You know yeah, you mean? gotta be in the moment. You gotta still, you know, perform and like, you know, do the song and, and not get distracted by it. But it's definitely a really cool layer to have when we can have it. Yeah, but you could have it in Europe. U.S. is a whole different market. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, it's a whole different ballgame. It's, it's, yeah. I, I think I saw some footage of you guys when you guys played at 013 in Tilburg mm -hmm. in Holland where, man, you had some fire. Yeah, you yeah. Those, fire. You know, and in some places we can have a little bit of fire and other yeah. places we can have full-on fire, which was also interesting to see. But, uh, yeah, a couple of those shows, it was just like, I mean, these, these, these blasters up front or whatever you want to call them are like, you know, fucking 15 feet tall. 20 feet tall it's insane yeah I, want, I, I hope to try that one day <laughs> i live vicariously through you bro <laughs> dude panda pandemic happens mm -hmm. you and rob you and rob keep busy you guys are like i mean you guys are releasing singles i mm -hmm. mean rob has this show called uh no fucking regrets you guys do uh electric happy hour on friday mm -hmm. you guys are staying busy which is awesome i checked out your stream last night it was really cool and um i just want to know you guys are really really embracing the singles thing yeah um and and that was uh, uh, uh i mean that comes from rob as i guess from a as a fan of hip-hop like he is yeah. everybody knows he's a fan of hip-hop and uh he was just you know he just he, he pays attention to, you know, to how that stuff is received and like how the business works, uh, you know, versus singles versus albums and stuff. And it just seemed, you know, everybody knows that, you know, streaming as it has evolved over the past decade or so, um, you know, physical sales fall off and it's just easier for people to have all that stuff at their fingertips. And I, I just think that, you know, in some ways, a lot of music listeners just, I just feel like the attention span has got shorter, you know, when you can switch from any song you want in the world to any other song you want in the world. Like you, you don't necessarily have to sit and take your time to digest, you know, a full album. People still do, of course. Yeah, of course. But the majority. Um, yeah. But there's, you know, it, it just seems like, you know, people have a hard time making it through a whole album and, yeah. Uh, and also just on our end, the time it takes, you know, to like, like for instance, the Bloodstone record, we wrote that, we spent like a year writing that record and then spent, you know, almost another year recording it. And, you know, it's a long, that's a, it's a long time and it takes a lot of energy, you know, uh, to, to really like switch over fully to that mode for that long. 
Um, but it's, as far as the singles, I think it was just something that, you know, it's kind of like the evening with, I think it was just something that Rob wanted to try and, uh, you know, wanted to experiment because he's always looking to like, kind of like, to kind of like to, 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 to push the envelope and like, see, you know, like what's possible and like what works and, you know, what could go over really well. And, uh, so, I, I mean, I think the first big single was, is there anybody out there? I think that was the first one that was like a full on single. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then, and, and obviously, you know, when you come to the pandemic, um, again, it's just like, there's no, it's like the blueprint is just out the window and, uh, kind of, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? You know, like, what are we going to do to, to, to keep this interesting, to keep it going? And, uh, so, yeah, I mean, and, and it allows us to stay pretty flexible um, because one of the big things that we like to do when recording is we really like to capture the mood and the moment, like the first pass on a riff or the first pass on a vocal. Um, like it's one of those things like in that moment when that creativity is at its peak, like you, you capture that moment. And sometimes if you're in a whole mood of writing, you know, and just doing it over and over and over again, you can lose just a little bit of that luster, but we really try to capture those, those first moments when it's, you know, that, that purely creative moment, that spark when it happens. And I think with the singles, um, I think we're able, we're able to do that because uh, I mean, with our new, we've, we uh, had a jam room, you know, which was pretty much just that it was just a jam room, but we moved our location and now we've got at least a small studio set up in like a separate room. And if we have ideas, we can pretty much do them immediately. You know, anything, anytime we're writing, like instead of saying, oh, I've got this riff, but I have to wait six months till we get off tour. And then, you know, we'll try to record it and make it a song. We have ideas and we can, we can go in anytime we want. So it allows us that freedom and that flexibility to really, like I said, capture that spark in that moment. Um, and so, you know, and if a song, you know, some songs, you can write whole songs in five minutes. Sometimes it takes five months, but, you know, we can do it at our own pace and we can capture it as the song develops, which I think keeps the song itself really fresh. Um, because, you know, because, you know, like when you record an album, you've heard those songs a thousand times before anybody else does. Yeah. So, and then, you know, by that time, they're already kind of old songs to you. Um, but this, this, you know, helps, you know, it just, uh, you know, and, and feeding it out bit by bit, like I said, it gives people something smaller to focus on and like really take in fully. So, uh, you know, and especially our, our last three singles, uh, the, my, my words are empty EP. Um, it just, you know, we got, a fantastic response and it was really very cool to see you know but i mean but there are times where like you know when when we were putting those songs out you know before we put them out even i you know i was looking at rob i was like dude i was like these are good fucking songs i was like i like these songs a lot these are good you know and those three together even just in those three songs you know covers like all of the things that we can do you know the rager the you know the headbanger and then like the more mellow, like more melodic kind of thing. Like it's even in just those three songs, we just really captured a lot, you know, a lot of uh, the best qualities, uh, which has been really cool to see. So, uh, you know, uh, it's been working well for us. You I mean, know? that's really cool, man. I mean, you guys learn how to pivot. You know what I mean? Like you're checking out the landscape. You're like, well, it's, we already did this. Let's try something new. It's a risk. Yeah. But yeah. you won't know until you try it. And I, exactly. you know, it's really inspiring to see that. Like, let's just do something we want to do. If mm -hmm. it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But that's cool that that thought of let's capture the moment instead of just beating the riff down to death. Right. Right. You know? exactly. So I, I, I think that's great. And maybe down the road, you'll have this collection of songs. And when the world 100% fully opens up, you, could, you have the choice of like, 
let's make a physical out of it if we wanted to. Yeah. Well, you know that, and that's, that's something that is totally open to us. Cause I mean, if we look back, we've got, you know, there've been a few singles. We've got, uh, my hands are empty. We've got, um, bullet, uh, right. Uh, uh, circle the drain. We've got the, yeah, we've got the, uh, civil unrest singles bulletproof and, uh, stop the bleeding. You know, we've got these three songs. We've got another, three or four songs like in the works currently. Wow. You know, that could, you know, also uh, go on there. And I mean, I think, you know, maybe the idea is that they could be all compiled together uh, just as, you know, a bit of a, you know, an interesting progression from, you know, Circle the Drain was almost two years ago. So, you know, like just that whole breath instead of it all being this, one little box of songs like it's cool to see that progression of like where the band has been over the course of writing these songs and over the course of like current events yeah things like that so i think that will be cool to see that's cool capturing that moment in time as it happens Mm -hmm. you know and And seeing the progression of songs like the era of the singles like like we said earlier temptations they release singles and a new one exactly every now and then and really give you something to focus on and it's like you know and i don't know you know, and there are some people that are like, oh, well, you know, like a metal band releasing singles, like, like you can't do that. Like, it, well, well, no, like that's not what we do. And it's like, well, why not? Like, says who? Like, there's no rule. There's no rule. And, you know, everybody's used to full albums, I guess. But like, you know, I mean, but like, it's like, why can hip hop artists do it and we can't? Yeah. You just do it. You know, I'm glad yeah. you guys like hang it. You know, you're in control, which mm-hmm. is cool. And it must be a good feeling to be in that, trying something new. It's like you said, keep yourself on your keep yourself on your toes and whatnot. Yeah. And, yeah. and to you know see the difference of writing, like we captured a moment in time, as opposed to like, ah, oh, dude, we beat that song to death so many times. Can we just yeah. move on? Like, yeah. we captured yes. it cool, you know. Yeah. But dude, I want to play this video. I, okay. I I I um I saw this last night, and I thought it was really fucking cool. I'm going to share the screen. And okay. when you see it, you're going to know. Okay. I, I really dig it, dude. I, I, I think this is awesome. Do you recognize this? Yeah. Yeah. That was just a totally impromptu. That was just I did pretty much just out of the blue, like just for fun, like just a little, you know. Dude, I saw this video yesterday. I stumbled upon it. I thought it was really cool how you and Phil just sat down. It seemed like you just, one of you probably said, hey man, let's just go jam real quick. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, much, you, like you were bored. Like, yeah. hey man, got nothing to do. You want to feel like jamming? Like, yeah, yeah, all right, let's jam. Yeah. I want to play it, dude, because I, I think you have a great voice, bro. Thank you. I hope this works again. Let's see this. Look at that, dude. You know how it... What, what does it do? Why is I it don't go- know, dude. Maybe because you're it? badass, bro. You too. Hey, Jared. Here we go. Hey, Phil. Where are we? London Town. Just down the road from Camden. Yeah. Yeah, Roundhouse. Two sold out shows. Two in a row. In a row. Do you feel like rocking out something right now? Absolutely. Yeah, let's check it out.
That's the lyrics. <laughs> Adam Red Bull. <laughs> Dude, that was badass, bro. That was badass. Thanks. Well, that's I mean, cool that you and Phil just did that, like out of the blue. Like, let's just jam out here, bro. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, and that's you know, it's uh, that's that's one thing that I you know enjoy, and even like in our current live streams and stuff, is sometimes we'll just you know just bust something out, like you know, and just. Like I said, just to keep it fresh and to, you know, kind of challenge yourself in some ways and, and you know, do something kind of unexpected and something new for your brain, which is, yeah. which is good. Dude, good vocal, bro. Good Thank vocal. You. Dude. Well, I mean, I've been singing my whole life. Yeah. So. I mean, That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Hey, dude, we're coming to a close. First and foremost, thank you for joining me on today. I yeah. really appreciate it. But before I, we go... I do this to all my guests that come in. Mm-hmm. It's called the Dirty Dozen. I give you 12 questions, you answer. Okay. You ready, my man? Okay, I hope so. All right. Mild or spicy? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I like spicy food. Uh, uh, what about what about medium? Mediano. Okay. That's the first I've Mix heard. It. We'll throw medium in there. All right. Mix it. Do- dogs or cats? Oh, um currently dogs all right a movie you could watch over and over again slc punk slc punk okay okay your biggest pet peeve complaining <laughs> i haven't heard that that's a new one that's a new one i've, I've got tardiness and Tardiness was one. Well, yeah, that's that too. That too. I'll take complaining. What time does your alarm clock go off every morning? Uh, between seven and eight a.m. Nice. A song you love to sing when you're all alone. Uh, um, uh, you two where the streets have no name. Good song, dude. Good song. Dream vacation. Ooh. Uh, ooh, that's tough. Uh, Positano, Italy. Ooh, Italy is always nice, man. Yeah. Italy is yeah. always nice. Um, one thing about you that probably annoys others. <laughs> <laughs> that probably annoys others. Um, uh, Sometimes I tend to interrupt people when they're talking. Oh, okay. That's, that's a new one, too. Your favorite smell? My favorite smell. Ooh. Rosemary. Oh, that smells really good. Mm. An instrument you wish you could play? Bagpipes. But, wow. That's telling you, dude. <laughs> I get drums, violin, or guitar. Bagpipes. Yeah. I'll take that, dude. Check this out on a scale of one to five. How good of a dancer are you? Maybe a four. Wow, dude. I got rhythm, bro. Uh, yeah, bass player, bro. It, I actually used to dance. Really? Like, not professionally, but when I was young, I was into, uh, me and my sisters were all into Scottish Highland dancing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So different, were- move, different moves, but, you know, it goes along with the rhythm. So. I yeah. thought you were going to say, me and my sisters were into Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Okay. What did you have for breakfast today? Oh, 
Uh, I had a uh, toast with cream cheese and salmon. Nice, dude. That's what my wife has that too sometimes in the morning. That's it's good. Super yummy. Ladies and gentlemen, Jared from Machine Head Sanctity. Thank you, bro. If you awesome. Thank you. Everyone out there, got to get a chance. Him and Rob Flynn do Electric Happy Hour every Friday. Is it every Friday? Every Friday, every Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bring your beers. Bring your silly hats. Bring your glasses. You know, jump on the stream. Say, hey, what's up? Sometimes we well, sometimes people throw out requests and we'll play them. Sometimes, not always. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's fun. Go check it out. Jared, thank you, man. I'm looking forward to when the world opens up, what Machine Head is going to do. And I can't wait to see you guys live. Awesome. You too, man. Take care. Stick around real quick. All right.